joined the Royal Navy uh, in 1960 and I specialised in microwave warfare. Uh, radar, obviously, which uses microwave, but they don't just teach you radar, they teach you all about microwaves and other uses. So I understood about microwave warfare and how it can damage people, how it can harm people. I was also a diver in the Royal Navy um, and microwaves are used in underwater mines as uh, booby traps. Uh, so I did that and, and I, I also did a medical course while I was in to help me understand everything. And when I left, uh, a small part of my job was to question captured agents, spies, terrorists, because microwaves then were used as weapons, as they are today. It is a, a perfect stealth weapon. And when governments don't like a group of people, for instance, the, the ladies who protest at Greenham Common in England about the American missile base, they camped, they were microwaved. We microwaved Catholics in Northern Ireland to make them sick. Uh, it, it goes on all over the world. And it's a weapon that you don't know you're being targeted because the dose is very, very low, which is actually more dangerous than a high dose. It's very, very low, and it may take a year or two, but you can, you can cause neurological damage and cancers. Uh, so that was published, and, and I receive up to a thousand communiques a week from various countries, various people, and uh, I, I can't handle it. So, uh, and I'm, I'm here now because somebody asked me to come here. Wi -Fi, I think anyone who puts Wi-Fi into a school should be locked up for the rest of their life. I really do. I think they're not fit to walk on the surface of this planet because they haven't looked at the research and whatever incentive they have it is not worth the genetic problems that parents are going to face with their children when they're born. And if you think of a single parent, a mother, who has a genetically deformed child, that that particular mother, mother will feel guilty because she gave birth. She will feel guilty and she will be worried every single second of every single day for her life. She will worry that the child won't marry. If the child can marry, she'll worry that the children will carry the disease, which they will. She will worry when she dies who will take care of them. So you are condemning both the family and the children uh, to a lifetime of absolute hell. <clears throat> and this is already published. It is available to look up. It's what I call intentional ignorance. They are offered some sort of incentive and they think, oh, this is going to be good, we'll have it. Now, the problem is, imagine you are a 15-year-old schoolgirl. All of the 400,000 eggs in your ovaries were with you at birth. They're not fully developed, but they're with you they are 10 times more susceptible to radiation than all of the other DNA in the body. And scientists don't realize that. They don't read all of the papers as I do. So you have this highly susceptible genetic material which is going to make your children. And you are irradiating it because Wi-Fi is they are transmitters, as well as the routers, as well as the ones either side of you. They are all transmitting at this height through your ovaries. <clears throat> so you are risking the damage, the DNA damage, of your child every time you sit down and you use Wi-Fi. And it's like saying, if I smoke a cigarette, which one will cause the damage? The answer is, I don't know. It could be the one today. <clears throat> So, you now have a child 
that has a probability of being genetically damaged. But the real damage is when that child grows up, you have genetic material in your ovaries which could be damaged. Now, the real problem comes when you become pregnant. If you are a teacher or a mature student and you become pregnant. Because the embryo inside your womb, in the first 100 days, all of those 400,000 eggs are forming in your embryo, your child's ovaries. <clears throat> so your child could be born with genetically damaged eggs. And the main thing about the eggs in the ovaries of your child is that they have absolutely no protection. It, it hasn't been developed yet. We have a natural protection against microwaves, but in the, your embryo, your uterus, in the fetus, uh, where your child is developing for the first 100 days, in the ovaries, the eggs do not have that protection. So they are at maximum risk from radiation. And for the first month or so, you wouldn't even know you were pregnant. You wouldn't even be taking precautions. That is the main danger area. So you give birth to a daughter, but her ovaries are now contaminated. She may be normal, she may be genetically damaged, but her ovaries are at the most risk. So when your daughter grows up and she becomes pregnant and has a baby, this is where one of these eggs will be fertilized and come out. So the real damage here is your grandchildren. That is where it is going to show most. And we already see this in animals that have reproductive cycles of a year or two years or three years. We're already seeing this and it has been published by veterinary schools and vets and scientists. So we know this happens. And it's also been documented uh, in the Cold War when women were deliberately microwaved. So we know it does happen. The documents are there. <clears throat> and what you're risking by putting Wi-Fi into schools is the future generations of all of these girls. But it gets worse because this particular DNA, the mitochondrial DNA inside you, and the DNA inside you, the mitochondrial DNA, you can trace unchanged to your mother, her mother, her mother, right the way back to the beginning of the human race. You can trace your ancestors, if you could, right back to the very first lady. It is unchanged, the mitochondria. And that is being unchanged in your children, which means if you damage it, your child could be genetically damaged, then her child, and her child, and her child, forever. You are condemning the future generations of every single child until there are no more lines left in the female in your family. You, you must stop. Some, a female must stop producing children for this to stop. <clears throat> so it, when you put Wi-Fi in schools, what you're saying is, for the sake of a little bit of money that saves getting a workman in to drill holes through the walls to, to feed cable because it's cheaper, we're just going to put Wi-Fi in, but you can have genetically damaged children for the rest of your family's career. That's what we're saying. So what we have here is an EMF detector. And what this does is measure magnetic, electric, and radio microwave frequencies 
essentially dangerous frequencies that are set off by electric devices that can cause sickness and disease, most especially like cancer. So we're going to measure a couple things in the kitchen. First thing we're going to measure is the microwave. So if we start the microwave, you can see here, just so you know how this works, at first the magnetic is the most dangerous, so that's what we're going to check. So we set it to zero to three. When you get to three, that's the red zone. That's considered the most dangerous. Anything with that has magnetic range of past three is considered very dangerous. Once it gets to three, you go to the top range, and that goes from three to a hundred. So we're going to start the microwave, see what happens. Okay, so immediately goes right to three. So let's go to zero to a hundred range, and it's still way past a hundred. So obviously the closer, the, the worse it is. So as we come further back, we'll see how far it stays past 100. This is considered extremely dangerous. Now getting closer, let's see when it stops. It's at 100. We're about four and a half feet away right now. Immediately back to zero. So that's how dangerous the microwave. So in addition to taking all the vitamins and nutrients and radiating your food, the microwave just standing within about four and a half to five feet of it is dangerous for you because of, it, of all the magnetic rays that it has. Now, let's go see some other things in the kitchen. So, we're going to leave the range on 0 to 100 just to see. This is a refrigerator. So, we have a new one and an old one. We're going to see what happens. So, putting against it, it's right at the danger line. It's right at 3. The freezer gets a little bit worse. Now, we have an old one here, and it goes way up. So, you can see the older models have a lot more magnetic frequencies. Now what's the point of knowing this about your refrigerator? Well, I want to show you something in the back. So if you go to the back of your refrigerator and you look, what happens is it immediately goes all the way up past 100 just like the microwave. Now what's the importance of knowing this? Is where your refrigerator is located based on what's behind it is what's very important. So if we have this refrigerator right up against this wall and our bedroom with our bed is right against the other side, then we're going to be having this magnetic frequency going right into our head while we're sleeping. Other things you want to avoid are, this is examples of, this is a standard Mac laptop computer. So we put this on top and as you can see we're still in the 0 to 100 range. It immediately goes way off the charts past 100. Now what does that mean to you? These are something that people keep on their lap. So we look here, going back, as soon as I get within a couple inches of it, it goes way off the chart. Now remember, three is what's dangerous. We're all the way up past 100 when I touch it. So what does that mean? You don't want to put a laptop on your lap. That's why Apple is no longer calling these laptops. They're calling them personal computers. Because when you put this on the lap, you're having it right on top of your reproductive organs. Really bad place to do that. We're going to try a couple of cell phones. So this is a Apple iPhone 5. We're still on the 0 to 100 range. We just made a phone call and look how bad it goes up. That's the back side and of course the front side just as bad. Now the phone call just stopped and let's see what happens. You can see even without a phone call the range still goes up and down. The reason that is is because every time your phone is looking for service the range goes up to about 50 and this is this is why it's a good idea to keep this out of your pocket. If you can keep this in a, in a knapsack or something like that 